Hi everybody, it's Sue here, and are you ready to begin our new Bible study, the Deborah Anointing? I think you're going to really love this time before we take a summer break. And I'm so excited to go back into God's Word with you and dig for His treasures and how He speaks so personally to each of our lives through the study and doing this all together with women from around the world. So I'm going to give you some how-tos and then I'm going to give you an overview of the coming week, our first week. But first I want to say, I don't know how long this Bible study is going to last. I know that sounds a little crazy, but it's either going to be six or seven weeks. I want to give it due diligence. It won't be over seven weeks, but we may be able to actually get through it even quicker at six weeks. So hang in there with me. It'll take us to mid-June. We'll take July and August off and then come back fresh in September. So anyway, let me let me give you a little how-to to do Bible study if you're new to this. I post the night before for the next day's lessons. And our lessons are already, always Monday, every day through Friday. Friday. So Monday night, for Monday I mean, I'm going to post Sunday and it'll be up there. And, and none of the posts ever leave the Facebook group. Every post that's a Bible study day will stay in the announcements tabs. So you guys, no matter if you're on your laptop, your phone, or your iPad, whatever it is you're using, when you get to the Facebook group, Cross Point Online Bible Study, you will just look below the... Um, the opening picture, it's a woman sitting there with her Bible, and there's all these little, I think it says community and groups and posts, and it'll say announcements. Always click the announcements, and you will always find the most recent post pinned to the very top, and then every day I change that pin. But if you need to find a later post, let's say you missed yesterday's, and all you do is go to the announcements, you'll see that day's post, and just scroll until you see yesterday's. The, they kind of move out of order. I wish they'd stay in order, but we, on Facebook, the minute you comment on a post, it flips it to the top. And since all the Bible study posts are always in the announcements on Crosspoint Online Bible Study Group, group for Facebook, um, whenever somebody comments, it'll flip it to the post that'll be just below the pinned post. Hey, did that make sense? Bottom line, go to the announcements. You'll find the whole current Bible study there. That's all you need to know. So let's talk a little bit about Deborah in the Bible. Can I tell you, I have a very close affinity with her. I'm going to tell you a cute story from my own life. But we find her on the pages of the book of Judges in the Old Testament, chapters 4 and 5. And I love her for many reasons. First reason, and then I'll tell you my little story, is that um, she is Prove positive that God uses women to lead ministry. You can't refute that Deborah was called of God. She judged a whole nation. She was up there with Gideon and with Samuel, or Samuel, yeah, he was a judge and a prophet. She was up there with those guys, and um, she she led without apology because she was anointed. And she was married, and sounds like they had a good marriage. I think there's just a few verses on that, and it comes up at the very end of our study. But God uses women to lead others, both men and women. And if that's, if that's new to you, and that's maybe not how you've been taught in the past, just keep an open mind, because this is the scriptures. This is God's word that we're looking at. And, you know, just along women in ministry, who did Jesus first tell that he was risen from the dead and said to go tell the men? He chose women. So, you guys, we have a place, and we have a place in God's kingdom. But why Deborah is so near and dear to my heart is just a cute story. I hope you'll think it's as cute as I do. My name, you know, is Sue Bolt. My last name starts with a B. And so about, probably about 20 years ago, I, I had this job and I worked full time for the, a county office of education in Santa Clara County in California, up in Northern California. And I started signing my emails and everybody knew me in my office as Sue B. And I always signed it Sue B-E-E, -E, like you'd think a honeybee. 
Didn't think anything of it. Really wasn't doing a whole lot in ministry. My husband was a pastor. I was a pastor's wife. And I just would sign everything Sue B. And then I moved to my next job, which was Santa Clara County Fire Department. Still kept up Sue B. And that's kind of just been a nickname. People still call me Sue B. But what I started to realize is that one day I was asked to speak at a church and tell my healing testimony. It was a church I did not know. It was a charismatic church, quite a large church, gave my testimony, and this woman rushed up to me, and she, she put, she said, can I do this? It turned out to be the pastor's wife. She put her hand on my tummy, and she said, I see you full of the honey of the Lord, and when you speak, and I'm not trying to build myself up, guys, but she said, when you speak, there's a sweetness about it. There is something that God is raising up, and I said, oh, you know what? That's such a word from the Lord. It's such a word of knowledge because I didn't know this woman from anybody. I didn't know her that she was even the pastor's wife. And she had just rushed up to me and had this word for me. And she had a bit more to say. I said, you know, I go by this nickname, Sue B. And I'm the honey pot. You know, that just, that's only God would know that. It was just a complete Holy Spirit gift, word of knowledge. And she said to me, and I did not realize this, she said, did you realize that Deborah in the Bible, that that name Deborah actually means honeybee? And I didn't, and what a revelation that was. It was like the Holy Spirit over the next few weeks started to really speak into my life. And at that time, for the first time in my life, really, I had been mentoring younger women than me. And that's what Deborah does. She's a leader. She's pouring down into the next generation. She's a warrior. And I had come into this place of really battling for women's souls and seeing women set free from bondage, from fear, from anxiety, from bad habits, from uh, eating too much, shopping too much, uh, yelling too much, whatever. You know, God was doing a healing work and he was doing it through me. And I was little old me, little old Sue B. And it all came full circle for me that God had raised me up to be a Deborah. This is probably about 15 years ago. I had no clue about it. Deborah anointing books. She hadn't even written it yet. Michelle McLean Walters, and that's the author of the book. So anyway, I hope you'll enjoy that little story. I'm Sue B. I'm filled with the Lord's honey, and I'm called to lead. But you know what? It's not just for me. It's for you too. And that's what we're going to see. This week, we're going to look at the introduction. We didn't do that last time with the Anna anointing, but we're going to actually study the introduction because it's pretty powerful. And we're going to hear the call of God on each of our lives to arise to the next level that he has for us. Because you know what, ladies? We're all leaders. We don't have to be standing in front of a crowd preaching. Uh, we don't have to um, be uh, have a bunch of influence. We can't. We don't have to be an influencer on Instagram or Facebook because I'm certainly not. I'm not any of those things. I mean, I do speak in front of people at times, but we are leaders. If we're leaders in our home, if we're leaders over our family, if we're leaders to our neighbors, He's going to call us to arise to get our gaze even beyond the circle of influence he's already given, uh, given us that we're aware of, maybe we have small children at home, he's going to lift our gaze to see the next row out. So can you guys just be really open to what he's calling you to do? Because he's called us to arise and be leaders. And finally, what we're going to discover this first week in the Deborah anointing, if I say Anna anointing, please forgive me, Deborah anointing, is that we're worshiping warriors. That as we worship our king, we want our vocabulary to be enlarged, to sing his praises, to speak his praises. Think of all his names when you worship. When you wake up in the morning, let worship be the first thing on your heart and mind. God, you're my rock. You're my defender. You're my fortress. You're my counselor. You're my mighty warrior. You're my shepherd. You're my savior. You're my redeemer. I worship. I honor you. Let God give you new words. And if you have the spiritual language of tongues or Holy Spirit gift of speaking, another language, then use that. And if you don't, maybe you'll get it through this study. It's very easy. Every one of us has it. I'll talk about that later. But we want to be worshiping warriors, just like in 2 Chronicles 20. The worshipers went out first and they defeated the enemy. 
And who's our enemy? It's not people. It's not the people we don't like. It's not the political party we don't like. It's not the guy down the road that cut us off. It is the adversary, the devil. And he has nothing on us because greater who is in us is greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. And as we worship, the Holy Spirit within us will start to raise up that bat, those battle prayers, the authority he's given us in the name of Jesus to take back our kids, not, not harping on them, not nagging them, not trying to get them to go to church, but to pray battle prayers of the, I speak Jesus over my son, over my daughter. I declare and break down every stronghold of the enemy that's keeping them from a vibrant walk in you. And God will give you discernment, what, to, what spirit to speak to directly. We'll start to pray for our cities and for our counties, our provinces, our states, our nations. So God is raising us up. And I think you're really, really, really going to enjoy the Deborah anointing. This is a small book. There's not much to read. I highly recommend you get it. There is a study workbook that I recommend you do on your own. We're not going to use it during this Bible study. We're just simply going to use the book. But if you want to go deeper, and especially through the summer when we take a few months off, um, I highly recommend getting the workbook. So you guys, that's it. Let me pray for us, and I'm so excited. And you guys can always catch up on the weekend. Again, what did I say? The announcements, all the posts are there from the most current study. And invite your friends. Feel free. It's never too late to invite friends to come and grow with us. So, Lord, I thank you, and I praise you. I thank you for the women that are going to be a part of this study, even if it's one day or every single day for 30 or 35 days. Father, you, you project, you, uh, your will be done on that, the time length of this study. But may we go deep and may every heart that comes by the group page really sense your Holy Spirit that there is so much more to live for than, a, than what a lot of us are. That you have so much for us to be and to do and you want to heal us and set us free and deliver us so that we might be deliverers in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this time together. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we seal this prayer that you would, your word would go forth. Amen and amen. So you guys, God bless you, and I can't wait to see you. I'm going to try to do these live chats every Monday at uh, Mondays, every Monday, from five, one at 5.30 and one at 7, and they won't last any longer than 15 minutes, okay? So I'll see you then, and I can't wait to spend more and more time with you. God bless you guys.